What is up, everyone? Uh, today, I am going to do a commentary over a really recent world record run. The reason I'm doing this is I'm kind of testing out the format. I'm not the best at creating tutorials. I have a hard time explaining things as they should be explained because the tricks in this are pretty precise. <clears throat> um, so instead, I think what I'm going to do is just commentate. Uh, recent world record run kind of explain the strats as they go along. I feel like that's going to be a lot easier to follow So let's go ahead and do that. This is a world record that I did earlier today. Today is September 7th, so or well September 6th when I did the run, but um, Let's go ahead and start. There's nothing too special in the beginning. This is for emulator. This is an any percent world record Meaning all glitches are usable we pick Kung Lao because Kung Lao is the only character that can break boundaries of the game. We're going to be using a trick called, or well, I call it infinite kicking. Um, I have a video of that. Actually, I have two separate videos of that on my YouTube if you want to go check out that trick. They go a lot more into depth. But what we're going to do here is we are going to slide into this corner. And I don't get it the first couple tries. Oh, no, I do get it the first try. Yeah, using a variation of animation cancelings, we can loop and basically infinitely fly. So we break out of bounds here and fly to the exit of this tunnel. This saves roughly a minute, 10 seconds. Uh, more so about a minute for people who are really good at it. Uh, it saves about a minute from doing that the regular way. And then here... We dodge into the spikes because it nullifies damage for quite a bit of time. And then we're going to kick over here. This skips a cutscene that you get on the other side of the bridge. And it's about two seconds faster than consistently doing it the other way. So the fatality room, we are going to use very precise... Uh, positioning to slam two onis the the middle oni and the left oni get their hitboxes sooner than the far right oni so we split them up and send the middle one into the corner of this fire and then we do a quick attack and do the other one as well so we spam slam two onis at once we can get them consistently into this corner and the reason we want to do that is because hitting two enemies at once gives credit for both attacks. And spam slams give the most fatality meter per attack. So it's the fastest way to fill up fatality meter. And that's just jumping and then using your heavy attack. Jumping, heavy attack. I miss the dialogue skip that you can usually get there, which saves about half a second. You can actually hit the exit of the tunnel faster than when it pops up and then here i get a really bad oni but basically we just want to throw an oni through this wall and proceed i got really unlucky with that tackle that usually doesn't happen what usually happens is both those onis will walk up but they won't try to attack and then you can get it in a single throw so the old route, and I'll pause it here in just a second. So the old route here was that you would drop down onto the sword to kill the Oni Warlord. That was the fastest way to kill it. You could kill it in uh, two cycles, which is, is really quick compared to how we used to run it. However, um, uh, another runner by the name of uh, Pisa Conwebo, uh introduced me to this new route where you skip the long jump which has been known to be able to do for a while but skipping the long jump gives you a lot of time save in the beginning but you start bleeding it throughout the run however due to another strat by the same runner and his co-op partner we have another way to save a bunch of time so you don't bleed nearly as much so it's a far faster strategy so instead of fighting the Oni Warlord, we're just going to kick around. The reason we kick around is because this area of the bridge, there's an invisible wall going up. 
However, it does not expand on either side. So you can just infinite kick to either uh, side of the bridge. And as long as you're past about this point in the blood, you're fine. You can kick onto the bridge and continue on. We have two mass guards to fight. So we're going to grab the one on the right immediately. And then we want to get running speed, slide kick, and then just throw them off. Now you can actually skip about half the animation of that portal by spamming start. I only just recently learned that. But we come out with Goro's Lair with a seven and a half second lead, which is really, really good for how optimized this game's getting. Now the old route was to do Wuxi Academy, uh, or well, Wuxi won the first area of Wuxi Academy. Uh, was to do it completely normal. You go through, you hit all the checks, all the flags, everything. However, it's now known that if you start infinite kicking and have a pretty good line, you can consistently save about 20 seconds compared to the normal route. Because we skip the cutscene of this bridge breaking. We skip all the cutscenes of all the different flag checks, all the spawning of Tarkatans and stuff like that. It does require a lot of height. It, it's only usable with the fast infinite kick variation. But we come over this little uh, balcony here. We kick over the wall of the bridge that we're on. And then we're going to navigate around this rock. Once we get around this rock, we're actually pretty much to the end of the area. All we have to do is get over the wall that leads to that little bridge. And you can tell that Kung Lao kind of jutted forward a little bit, which means that we're all the way through. I messed up the exit there. You can actually exit a lot sooner. Uh, I was spamming X too much. And when you're in the air, you cannot exit a room unless it's into a portal. My Wuxi 2 was absolutely atrocious. I do not have a good pattern yet for uh, this slower run. With long jump, you can get to this little area long before the Tarkatans get there. But I had so many issues in the practice runs that I was terrified of the Tarkatans walking over. So I was not doing very accurate kicks. I mean, we could save 12, 13 seconds just there alone. So we use fast kicks to get all the way over here. I also drop two kicks, which is really bad. And then we use the air grab variation to jut ourselves above ground there. And then Wuxi 3 uh, is done pretty normally. The only thing we don't do is we don't throw the body onto the spikes. It's just a tad bit slower than infinite kicking. But we just slide walk all the way to the end. And then just kick on top of the platform. And that's Wuxi Academy done. And like I said, it could have been done a lot faster. I lost a ton of time in Wuxi 2. And I could have actually done a little bit better kicking in Wuxi 1. So there, there's a ton of time save already in the run. But the strat, uh, the, the strat has proved itself. It's a very strong route. This area is pretty simple. We bypass everything and just go straight to the uh, the end game portal. Basically, it leads to Sub Zero, Foundry, and Scorpion. However, we say screw the rest of the game. We're gonna go right to Foundry portal. And the way to do that is ignore these guys. And then we want to under map on the right side of this door. The reason we don't go left side is there's actually a wall that extends on the left side. So the right side of that door is the only side that you can really get through consistently and in a you know appropriate time. Also, something I just learned. If you're not sure about positioning, the only thing that matters for this area right here 
is that you do not hit this glow. Even though there is no fire there, there is a hitbox for fire here, which means it will kill you because it will uh, stop the loop and then you'll fall infinitely until the death plane. So we just go in between these two. And then as soon as we get right next to the little door icon, we're just going to drop because we'll hit the hitbox for the portal. And once again, I could have had much cleaner under map in the beginning, which would have saved a ton of time. So Foundry is pretty standard. We're going to hit both the tester mites. I like doing both the tester mites first because I don't like uh, going down the tunnel after getting the axe. The way to do fast test your mites is to spam all four inputs, uh, X, square, triangle, and circle. It accepts all of them, and the faster you spam, the faster you can do test your mite. It also accepts L1 and R1 as inputs for the uh, finishing of it. So the timing for the wrecking balls is pretty tight since we don't have long jump. But... We can get through pretty easy. Unfortunately, we don't have a skip for this entire area yet. I don't think there is one. I also get really unlucky here with that Oni placement. But now we're going to uh, Axe Skip. Here we skip three other rooms. I believe it's three. It might be four. But the way to do that is to clip out of bounds here. The important thing is, is not to clip further than this tile right here. If you clip further than halfway past this tile, the lava extends to here and will boost you back above ground. You can kind of see it glowing beneath the tile here. What you want to do is be on this little line further up that way whenever you kick into it it kind of pushes you into a divot here and then it helps you get under the map and then the route is just to kick up here go right and we're going to land on an invisible pipe the important thing is is that that lava extends all the way through here so we want to keep a little bit of distance from the right wall And then once we're on this little pipe, you can see me uh, stop here and then kind of jut. We jump and start infinite kicking again. And then we land behind the door and head on in. And then from here, it's pretty simple. We get the axe, we head back and break the crystals, and then kill everyone in the room. Overall, I, I think that sub-16 is definitely possible, though. Just kind of fill in the void because there's not much to talk about. The, the little in-between here is pretty standard across any run. Also, if y'all enjoy this kind of tutorial, let me know. I wouldn't mind doing one on like each of the other main categories. Uh, all medallion routing and things like that. No out-of-bounds routing, stuff like that. Uh, it's a little bit easier in my head to conceptualize what I need to talk about when doing a commentary. And so if this helps explain the run better, explain the routing, uh, I would, I'd be happy to do more. And like I said, I do have a couple other tutorials on my channel. So feel free to check those out. The only reason I break the left crystal here into the right is because it sets me up for two enemies on the right side. I screw up my timing here, but it is possible to get both the Demon Handler and the Oni into a single cycle kill. But I, I wasn't playing too amazing, so I miss a lot of strikes here. 
but the name of the game is just to kill these people as fast as possible and get through the door. Now, the big difference here is if you are running the real hardware version of this game, when we get to the top of these stairs, we're going to hit a cutscene. Before you do boss rush on real hardware, you have to save quit. Uh, it is not present on emulator, nor is it present in co-op runs, but if you don't save quit, it will crash before Shao Kahn. I don't know why. Uh, it's probably to do with like some flag not being hit correctly, but it it always softlocks before Shao Kahn on real hardware. So... Okay, so we have started boss rush. Each of the three bosses have their own patterns and own like little strategies. The perfect Shang Tsung, which we don't get here, is called Morphless uh, Shang Tsung, which means he doesn't morph into Sub-Zero. You can actually get him into this lock before that happens. That saves about eight seconds. The strategy for Shang Tsung is extremely free. We want to get him into this corner because uh, the northern side of this ring has like the best divot. But all you do is get him into here and then just spam slam. Uh, the reason you can't do any other move is because bosses have combo breakers that will engage after five hits. Spam slams do not count as that because the boss is always on the ground. But pretty simple. You can redirect uh, when spam slamming. So like if he starts to shift on either side, uh, all you do is move your analog stick and Kung Lao will turn and that changes the hitbox, which will in turn kind of steer uh, Shang Tsung where you want him. Always free though. Shang Tsung is, at least for Kung Lao, incredibly free. Kentaro is a little different. Uh, the only thing you really have to worry about Kentaro in normal is Fireball Kentaro, which luckily we don't get here. But if you ever start the round and Kentaro is like standing stock still, he's about to shoot a Fireball. So just be sure to dodge it. The main strategy is to air kick until he throws the punch. And then you want to heavy slam and just repeat special uppercuts. And that's Kentaro. Pretty easy. Shao Kahn is a beast of a different color. Um, the most dangerous Shao Kahn pattern is the quick charge. Basically, he starts the fight with a, a shoulder charge. And if you don't dodge backwards, it will always hit. The main issue with Shao Kahn, other than that, is his stagger meter is really, really l weird. Uh, he gets iframes most of the time he tries to attack. Or if you get him locked in certain combos, he will just get boss invincibility. And then we'll proceed to combo breaker you or do whatever he wants. The main idea is to get him locked in a... Uh, a cycle of special uppercuts, uh, hat throws, and quick punches, but there's very little consistency in it. I think I get him locked uh, at least one good time here. So you can see how the second quick punch there just didn't work, and also how he can kick behind you. The main idea is since the first two bosses are super free, uh, we come into Shao Kahn with a lot of health, and so you can take really, really aggressive lines. Shao Kahn will also always start phase two with a shoulder charge. So as long as you don't walk forward, you won't get hit by it. And then after every like set time period, I'm not actually sure of the numbers, he'll go into this spin phase um, it's not a damage thing, just a timing thing. But if he hits you with it, it's usually a run killer. He can stun lock you in the air with it. I kind of wussied out here. I really wanted to continue being aggressive because I, you can get Shao Kahn in a single cycle. 
but I really wanted to just complete the run for this video to kind of give uh, I, I wanted to give an explanation to how the run's done in a more cohesive way than my tutorials. My tutorials aren't the, the greatest, uh, especially whenever storyboarding the routing and everything. So I figured that this would probably be a nice analog for it. But this is this is Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks any percent. I mean, this is the main theme of it. This is pretty much the standard route for now, barring any new major skip, which I don't really see happening. Um, but yeah, 1642, I was pretty happy with it. I didn't expect to get it in as few tries as I put in, but uh, some of best, 1554. Th this is where I am leaving this. I will probably not run emulator anymore. I mainly wanted this just for this video. Uh, whoever wants it, 1530, 1520, uh, probably around there is about the limit. So there's still a ton of time save. It, it, it's a free, free final minute barrier for whoever wants to put forth the time. But here's the speed run explained, and I, I hope y'all enjoyed.